I'm going to show my homemade vacuum former and uh, if I get enough interest I'll post my designs online for how to build your own. It's pretty simple. I'm going to show you how I actually pull a vacuum with this. Right here is the vacuum former. It's got two chambers. One is a closed sealed box, hollow box, with a perforated top surface going down to a shop vac. When I turn on the shop vac, it sucks air in through these holes. Anything I put on this top layer becomes the mold. You want to provide relief holes in there for the air and a inset bottom area so that the air can actually get drawn through the piece and through the holes in the platen. Then I have a frame which I'm going to clamp the plastic in. This frame gets sat over a heating area which I just use a simple hot plate in there. I put it over this until the plastic gets to the right temperature and then I drop it over this whole assembly right here with the vacuum on to suck it down. And I'm going to try one live online with you guys to show you how it works in a second. I also made this top cover just to facilitate an even heating of the plastic. So let me start by loading the plastic. I'm going to open up the frame. I'm going to grab a sheet. I either use polystyrene, but in this case it's PETG. PETG is less crystalline. It's less likely to break by a crack in a bend. It's very flexible. That's a good vacuum form material. I think this is um, 16th inch. Just trying to get the backing material off of the plastic. There we go. Once that I've got that, I just position that as squarely as I can onto the frame. I have these rubber gaskets there. Then I bring this down and try to clamp it to evenly. I'm going to turn on my heater to a medium heat. That's very precise. And I'm going to put this on here like so, trying to get this to heat up evenly. We'll come back in a minute once it starts heating. We'll pause the video and come back when it's heating a little bit. Okay, the plastic's been heating for about two minutes, three minutes. You start to see, if you can in the reflections, an uneven dip as the center falls down more than the corners because the center is getting hotter faster than the edges. I'll usually facilitate a little bit with a hot air gun around the edges. Just trying to get an even consistent heat. What we're looking for is a nice even slump in the middle, a flexible, not too bouncy back center. You want it to be soft enough that it's going to actually form with the vacuum over the piece. You don't want to get too hot that you're actually melting the material and getting air bubbles on the surface. Then you're just going to get a dirty surface. But there's a fine balance. Usually in vacuum form shops, you're going to find guys testing with their fingers, trying not to burn yourself, until you feel just that right consistency of bounce back and, and bend. Um, it'll take you a few trials. You've got to use a little bit of material until you really figure out what's the amount of heat. It's going to take you one or two times of heating it up too much where you get air bubbles and it's real bad. Right now it's dripping down really far. My finger isn't even touching the plastic. There we go. So we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the vacuum and I'm going to move this right over there and hope that we get a good night. There we go. Shut off the heater. That looks really nice didn't come down as much in the sides that I would have wanted to. I'll have to do one more. But I'll be able to test the, the inner draw much better. It's inevitable that you're going to get these... I'm going to let it cool down all the way. It's inevitable that you're going to get some of these wrinkles on the outside edge unless you have a huge draft angle. I printed this on my ender so I kept it pretty small. I'm going to release the vacuum, open up the frame. I'm going to have to do one more of these. Oh, it's stuck to the, to the rubber gasket material. I'll just put that on later.
There it is. Let me see if I can get this out. If it doesn't want to come out by hand, the best way is to spray some air in there. You've got to leave real abundant draft angles if you ever want your mold to come out. Let me use a little compressed air. Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay, let's do one more because I don't like that this didn't come out nice again.